That's drunk. As you know, Nintendo loved to add the word Super to a lot of its Super Nintendo games, I guess maybe because it was meant to imply that these were better than mere NES games, which had regular old Castlevania, Double Dragon, and Adventure Island to name a few, but Super Nintendo had Super Castlevania, Super Double Dragon, and Super Adventure Island, and yeah, those games were all pretty substantial upgrades in one way or another, whether it was the gameplay or the visuals or the music or whatever. But then there's some games that were given the Super moniker that were decidedly unsuper. For instance, Putty is a game developed and released for the Amiga in 1992, so then we got Super Putty for Super Nintendo in 1993, and it's pretty much the same friggin' game. Seriously, this looks like an NES game at best. You play as Putty, who lives on Putty Moon, only one day it gets invaded by an evil wizard named Dazzle Days, and Putty is somehow banished from Putty Moon to the planet below. So to get back home, Putty needs to collect these little bot things to build a huge tower that will reach back up to Putty Moon so he can climb back up and exact his revenge. And I don't blame him for wanting to get back, because where he's trapped now is the most Amiga-looking game to ever Amiga in all of Amiga land. Amiga ports on Super Nintendo all have that kind of look to them. They all use the same obnoxious, barely readable font, whether it's Alfred Chicken or Magic Boy or James Pond or whatever. Putty is fittingly enough a blue blob, which puts this game in the direct competition with all the other blue blob games of its time, namely Claymates, which was made by the folks who made Clay Fighter. That game has you start as a blue blob, but you eventually change into a mouse, a bird, a cat, and a fish. And there's also Smart Ball, where your blob form can scale and cling to walls and ceilings in a side-scrolling platformer. That game also has an unreleased sequel, titled Jerry Boy and 2, that's actually pretty good. In Super Putty, your blue blob is not a side-scroller, but more of a vertical scroller, which coincides with the story. The game starts with a quick tutorial that explains all your abilities, all of which are really simple and intuitive, like stretching and attacking and such, or pressing down to sink into a puddle to absorb stuff, as well as pressing the X button to inflate. And your abilities are tethered to a pliability meter up top. After that, the game starts proper, with the goal of each stage being to find these robot things and carry them to the door at the end of the level. The in and out numbers up top tell you how many you need to move on with the game, and you can just absorb them, and you see it appear in the upper left there, and you carry it out the door. You can only carry one robot at a time, and in the meantime, you've got enemies coming from all over trying to get at you, and later on, the bots that you're trying to collect are seemingly trying to get away from you, bouncing around all over the place. There's six total levels with at least three stages each, and unfortunately there's no passwords or save battery here, you gotta beat this one in one sitting. It's all very simple stuff, with odd little wrinkles here and there, that you discover as you keep playing. For example, there's certain enemies you can absorb and later borrow their shape and their abilities, kind of like Kirby would. There's other power-ups here and there that you pick up as well, like this power-up the manual refers to as Uncle Ted. He comes out and plays an organ and everything freezes. Okay, sure. The game plays fine, the controls are okay, the level design is okay. Normally I'd refer to this game as a big bag of ordinary, but one thing brings it down, and that's the sound design. <laughs> I don't know if I'm playing Boogerman or Super Putty, but all the squeaks and squeals and fart sounds really got old after a while. This is one of those games I just mute the TV and put my headphones on. Super Putty did get a sequel titled Putty Squad that stayed in PAL regions, and that one is much more of a traditional side-scrolling platformer, and as a result, it's a slightly more interesting game. It also dials back the obnoxious sound design, which is a plus. And to its credit, I will say that if you enjoy the Putty games, you'll enjoy Putty Squad, but if you don't care for games like this, then you're better off with about a gazillion other platforms. Performers. Anyway, yeah, throw Super Putty into the tepid recommendation pile. If I were to make a power rankings of the best games where you play as a blue blob, number one would be Claymates, numbers two and three would be Smart Ball and Jerry Boy in some order, and number four would be Super Putty. It's not that it's bad, it's just staggeringly ordinary, with a couple really annoying qualities. It's one of those cases where it's perfectly okay for what it is, but if you went your entire life never having heard of this one, it's not like you're missing out on much. And I want to thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.